we are shocked when we first learned that our chameleon has parasites. And at the end of this video, I'm going to link to a video that says what to do when you find out your chameleon has parasites. But in this video, I want to get ahead of that and say, how can you prevent your chameleon from getting parasites in the first place? And to do that, we're going to have to understand how chameleons get parasites, specifically how they get them in captivity, and then concrete steps that you can take to make sure that your chameleon doesn't get those parasites. So let's get started with how do chameleons get parasites? In the wild, the vast majority of parasites get into the chameleon via the oral route, meaning the parasites have created ova, eggs, oocysts, and other infectious material that uh, somehow hitches a ride with a cricket or insect or something and gets into the chameleon's mouth. From there, it's an easy trek down into the intestines and the life cycle continues. Another way is bloodborne, mosquitoes, ticks, uh, any of these other insect or arthropods that feed on the chameleon's blood. And with that, they can bring parasites from other chameleons. In addition to that, there are two lesser understood possibilities for the transmission of parasites. One is directly from the mother to the eggs, or in the case of Jackson's and other live bearers, from the mother to the live babies coming out. And it appears that some parasites hitch a ride, and so the babies actually are born or hatch with parasites there waiting for them. And finally, whenever there's physical contact between chameleons, there's a chance for parasites to take advantage of that. That can be during mating, a fight, uh, perhaps the behaviors of marking territory. We don't know why chameleons wipe their cloaca on branches or they try to taste the branches, but that's certainly an obvious possibility for the transmission of parasites. And so now that we understand that, how do chameleons get parasites in captivity. And spoiler alert, the most common way that they get parasites in captivity is the oral route. And so let's take care of those other situations. First of all, bloodborne isn't going to really happen in captivity because either we don't have mosquitoes, which we usually don't, or we don't have another chameleon in the same area with the chameleon and the mosquito. We generally don't have that interaction between chameleons because we keep chameleons separate. Although if you do have a situation where you are mating your chameleon or you have a baby that was group raised with other baby chameleons, well, then you bring that back into play. Now, the possibility of babies hatching and having parasites there waiting for them is a very real possibility. I can't offer a whole lot of detail on that right now. It's still something that we're exploring and trying to prove that this actually happens. And it's not as simple as, okay, a baby has parasites. We have to prove that the parasite came from the mother, was in the egg or on top of the egg, and wasn't just incidental in the soil when the baby hatched and started running around. So more study needs to be done. The biggest danger, of course, is the oral route. And that means the parasite reproductive organism, whether that's ova, which is an egg, or an oocyst or a cyst, and those are the protozoan forms. Whatever the reproductive form is, it has to be present and it has to find a way into the chameleon's mouth. And so without getting into the details of what the different species of parasites do, it basically comes down to how does your chameleon get access to chameleon parasites? Because parasites are generally specific. And so there may be parasites that infect many reptiles. But then again, how do you get reptile parasites into your home? Say you have one chameleon. How does that one chameleon get parasites? And that happens either your chameleon came with parasites or somehow you brought parasites into the situation. First, did your chameleon come in with parasites? If it's a wild caught chameleon, probably, most likely, it came in with parasites. Even when we clean up our chameleon and we say, okay, we have three negative fecals, there's no more parasites here. That's not entirely true. Once a chameleon has parasites, it is hard to say that that chameleon will forever be without those parasites. These parasites, they insist, they hide in certain areas of the cage. They have had millennia to try to figure out how to infect chameleons, and they're good at their job. So if you get a wild-caught chameleon, just assume that you are going to be spending the rest of your life with that chameleon managing parasites. 
but many of you have a captive hatched chameleon, and with that comes the expectation that this chameleon does not have parasites. You see, a problem that is going to have to sometime or later be addressed in our community is that just because you have a captive hatched chameleon does not mean there's no parasites. And we've fallen into a trap where we believe that just because we only have captive hatched chameleons in our collection, that there are no parasites. And then we end up breeding these chameleons. And then we sell the babies, and of course they're captive hatched from captive hatched, so they don't have parasites. And the problem is that when you have that belief, you don't check for parasites. And so if something happened along the way and you ended up with parasites in your chameleon, whether they came from the breeder or somewhere else, once you have babies, if you haven't checked, you may be sending parasites out with your babies and your customers are just assuming that there's no parasites, so they're not checking. Of course, the obvious question is, how is this happening for through so many breeders and generations and it's not caught? And the answer is actually good news. Our husbandry is so good that the chameleon's body is managing the parasite load like it was designed to do in the wild. If you have good husbandry, you may have parasites for the entire life of your chameleon and it'll never show. And that's because the chameleon's body is designed to deal with parasites. In fact, having a body with no parasites is unnatural for the chameleon. Now that's what we want to go towards because in captivity we've knocked everything out of balance, but we should realize that just because a chameleon is healthy, doesn't mean it doesn't have parasites. Now, what are some ways that you could inadvertently have brought parasites home? And this can happen if you have any sort of physical interaction with anybody who's had any sort of contact with other reptiles or other chameleons. For example, at a reptile show. Have you ever been to a reptile show? People are touching reptiles, they're touching other things, they're touching doorknobs. And if somebody who has had a wild caught chameleon has been handling it and got some parasite over on their hands and then went to the bathroom and then you followed and you touched the doorknob or the door handle, you may now have parasites on your hands. And so you may be personally recognizing the strictest of quarantine and habits and cleanliness and still you end up with parasitic infectious material on your hands which you touch your things and then you bring them all home, you touch those things, you touch the cage, and yes, the parasite infectious material ends up in your chameleon cage through this very circuitous roundabout way. But that is what parasite eggs have developed over the millions of years to do an excellent job at. And I know this is disturbing. I was talking to my friend about all of this and he actually canceled his plans to go to a reptile show because of it. And I can't argue that that was a bad idea, but in everything that we do, there's a weight of risk. The best way to make sure you never get parasites is to get a chameleon and lock yourself in the chameleon in a room that you raise your own feeder insects in. But we can't live life that way, and so we're going to have to accept a certain level of risk. That is life. And just because your chameleon ends up with parasites somehow, some way, as disappointing as it is, as frustrating as it is, doesn't mean your chameleon is broken. Like I said, that is the natural state of the chameleon, that the chameleon and the parasites are in balance. The problem with parasites comes in when they bloom out of balance. And that of course is something we can't allow and it's why we try to eliminate all of the parasites from the system because we're bringing the chameleon into captivity. That is taking things way out of balance and it encourages parasite bloom. Simply because we're putting the parasites in a closed container with the chameleon. That's not natural, and the parasites haven't adjusted their reproductive strategies to account for that. So we have to provide the balance by eliminating the parasites. So the first thing to do is remove the stigma, remove the panic. Just because there's parasites doesn't mean it's a disaster. Your chameleon is probably going to be just fine. We just have to understand the parasitic life cycle and understand how to manage it. Now, other than keeping a close eye on what you touch, who you touch, and what you touch that other people have touched, there are cleanliness and hygiene standards that you can incorporate into your own everyday husbandry that can take the chances of getting a parasitic infection way down. For a parasite to infect your chameleon, number one, it has to have adults. Those adults have to produce infectious material. 
the eggs, and those eggs have to get back up into the chameleon's mouth. And these are things that you can do to totally disrupt that life cycle. And we'll start with the obvious. First of all, don't get a wild caught chameleon. Get a captive hatched chameleon. Second, keep your chameleons individually. That is required husbandry anyways. You should not be keeping your chameleons together. But of course, there's the mating aspect and that is a risk. So if you don't want that risk, don't mate your chameleons. Three, get an annual fecal check. What this means is you're going to collect the poop that your chameleon uh, gives you once a year, take it to the vet and have them check for parasites. Although our goal is to have no parasites, the way to responsibly manage that is to check at least once a year to see if any parasites got through. So carefully collect the poop in a Ziploc bag, give it to your vet and say, please check for parasites. Do that every year and you will know if any of them slipped in. Next, practice parasite level cage cleaning every day. What that means is the second a poop comes out, the second you see it, you go in and you clean it all up thoroughly. That means use a paper towel and sop up all of the feces that you see. Use a disinfectant. I like quaternary ammonia or accelerated hydrogen peroxide. Spray down the area once again with a different paper towel. Clean that up, spritz it with water to make sure all of the disinfectant is gone. Wipe that up with another paper towel. And by this aggressive spot cleaning, you'll be doing the best you can to remove any infectious material that may be in that poop. And finally, beware your hands. The absolute number one way that parasites get into chameleon cages is through these hands, what we touch. So assume that there's eggs all over the place. What are you going to do with your hands to make sure that they're not bringing eggs in? You can wash your hands before you go to take care of your chameleon. Those cage latches that you open and close, that's a prime spot for parasite eggs to be transferred. When you're picking up the poop, wear a disposable glove. Glove your hand, get that paper towel, get all of the poop up, make a fist with the poop inside, and then unroll that disposable glove over it, keeping everything inside and that goes in the trash. And do not touch anything with that gloved hand, especially not the cage latches. And by just doing those simple things, you're putting barrier upon barrier upon barrier that the parasites will have to get through and the chances are they're not gonna be able to do it. Now, you may ask, okay, I'm going to be getting a captive hatched chameleon. How do I check to see if parasites are coming with this chameleon? And the way you do that is to put them in a cage that has a plain bottom, no soil, no nothing on the bottom. You can have plants that are mounted on the side, but the important thing is that you have a clear bottom. What you're trying to do is you're trying to collect poop for an analysis without it spreading to the entire cage, like it could if you had a dirt floor. I know bioactive is cool. Save it until you've done the check to make sure your chameleon doesn't have parasites. So poop goes down, you take it to the vet and you get it checked. Now, if the vet says that you've got parasites, you have to deal with the parasites and there's a number of videos and information here on the channel that tell you what to do. Essentially, you do what the vet tells you and give them the medication. But if it's a negative that there's no parasites, I want you to actually do it two more times. The standard suggestion in our reptile community that has worked very well is to not believe it until you have three negative fecal checks. And this is because parasites don't always shed their ova oocysts and reproductive organisms. And I've seen that myself because I have a microscope and I do my own fecal checks on all of the poop that my chameleons give me. I make sure I am on top of whatever's going on inside of them. And I remember one female where I got a, a fecal sample and I went through it and it looked entirely clean. It was amazing. And so I was feeling pretty good about it, but of course you gotta do uh, more than that. I've gotta do two more. The second one I did, it was completely different. It was a party in there, not a good kind of party. There were worms all over the place. And so if I just went with that first test, that infection would just go out of hand and I wouldn't know it until my chameleon got sick. So get three negative fecal checks. And then you can be mostly certain that your chameleon is free of parasites. But once again, do an annual check. Now, one thing I would like to propose for the community 
is that we all get really good at using a microscope and we do fecal checks as a normal part of our chameleon husbandry. I have done that in my husbandry and it has drastically increased the quality of my husbandry. Doing your own fecals really isn't that hard. A microscope is a couple hundred dollars and there's lots of education how to do it on YouTube and online. And if you look for a used microscope, it's even cheaper. Now, if you wanna save time and make sure that all the information you're going over is specifically for you and for this purpose, I created a community powered course called Hunting Microscopic Chameleon Parasites, and it shows you everything from start to finish. It assumes you know nothing, so it starts at the beginning of the chameleon parasite relationship. You learn how to buy a microscope, what equipment you need, how to set up the fecal smears and the fecal floats, how to identify parasites, understand the medicines that are used for those parasites, and how to talk with your veterinarian to make sure that you are a full partner with your veterinarian advocating for your chameleon's health. And so if you're interested in this shortcut to make sure you get the best information possible, the link to that course is in the description. In closing, realize this battle with parasites is not an easy thing. Spreading themselves is what they do for a living and any parasite that hasn't figured out how to get their eggs from the forest floor of Madagascar up into the mouth of a chameleon died out a long time ago. And so we are fighting a powerful, evolutionary force. Our goal, at least with the understanding that we have right now, is to remove parasites from our chameleons. But we shouldn't see this as a one-time event. It needs to be a management strategy that we employ throughout our chameleon's life. Once again, I know the concept of parasites is disgusting, it's disturbing, but also just realize it's just part of keeping chameleons. And it's not a disaster if your chameleon has parasites. We know how to manage them. Your vet can give you the medications. And by using the hygiene methods that I've described in this video, you can manage that infection very easily. You just need discipline and understanding where the danger points are. And we've gone over that. And so from this point, you recognize what's going on, you recognize the risks and the dangers, carefully manage your interaction with other reptiles and other chameleons and other chameleon and reptile people and areas, institute that aggressive cleaning behavior into your normal everyday husbandry, and learn how to do fecals yourself or get your vet to do a check once a year. And with all these things in place, you will be preventing the parasitic infection. And if a parasitic infection slips through, you will be effectively managing the level of that infection before you even know that it exists. My name is Bill Strand. I'm the founder of the Chameleon Academy. And on the end screen, you're going to see a chameleon parasite playlist that's going to have a number of videos that talk about this specific topic and will empower you to safeguard your chameleon's health. Take care and we'll see you next time.